So my question is, how can young kids like me stay curious and keep that curiosity through their life? And what sparked your curiosity the most as a kid? Yeah, th those are great questions. Maybe I'll take the second uh, part of that question first. Um, it, you know, I, I explained that, you know, I grew up in a household where I had two scientists for parents. You know, my dad's a physicist, my mom a chemist. And, you know, in a dynamic like that, sometimes kids, and I was a little rebellious, the last thing I wanted to do was become a scientist because oftentimes kids don't want to do what their parents do. Yes. And, you know, I had a little bit of that, but the thing that changed my life was watching on TV, I was uh, just eight years old, the moon landing, the Apollo 11 mission. And I just watched on the nightly news all of the coverage. I was drinking something called Tang. Have you heard of Tang? No. Uh, it, it was this pretty awful orange juice, but you know, people said that the astronauts were drinking it. There were these things called space food sticks. Oh yeah, I've heard of those. Yeah, um, but just watching that and starting to wonder what it takes you know, for a whole bunch of people to solve the problems, to bring men to the moon and then safely back home, uh, that that changed my life and made me want to become a scientist. And it honestly changed the relationship with, with my parents. So getting to your first question, um, there are a couple of things I always tell people. Uh, one is don't be afraid ever to be around smart people. And so in life, you're going to have choices to make, you know, what friends to make, uh, who to talk to. Some of them might be scary because they're a lot older than you, um, or you feel like they're a lot smarter. Uh, you, you know, it's okay to have those fears, but uh, the best thing is to just be willing to be around smart people. And if you just make sure to make choices and think about, will I get to be around a lot of other interesting smart people? Um, it, it keeps you interested. Um, I completely agree because I actually skipped a few grades, so right now I'm in ninth grade. Um, You're in ninth, how old are you? To 11. <laughs> I'm still adjusting to the new life of being 11. My birthday was literally like uh -huh. a week ago. Uh -huh. So how does it feel when, if you're 11 years old, and then you're in a classroom full of 15 year olds. Um, well, I try to bring myself near the good people and yeah. the people who are serious about their work, but sometimes I do encounter some people who are not so nice. Yeah. You know, one thing, um, I, I, I talked about this man who wrote this essay 100 years ago. His name is Abraham Flexner on the usefulness of useless knowledge. Um, and part of uh, what you learn when you read that essay, and it's worth reading, uh, that it's still available online, is that one of the things about science and scientists is that most people in the world don't understand scientists and what they do. Uh, and more fundamentally, they don't understand why scientists are so interested uh, in science. Um, and so it's a part of life as a scientist. It's sort of like part of life as a creator or an artist. Uh, people won't always understand, uh, but you shouldn't let go of, of that interest. Even here for my current job in Microsoft, you know, there are people who have to hit quarterly revenue targets, and they're wondering, you know, why are we you know, bothering with all this research stuff? Right. And and, and you just have to power through that and, and remember just how valuable it is, uh, that, uh, that the big value that science brings. Yeah. Like I say, we rule the world. Nerds, <laughs> Nerds rule the world. So uh, at some point, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I'm going to have to retire from this job, so you should think about applying. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. I love quantum computers. They're amazing. Oh, you're going to get to hear a lot more about, about that today. I, I think you're, you're going to be really impressed. I know. I mean, they just, they just, they're so beautiful. Like, 
They look like chandeliers, but really, they're so much more than a fancy chandelier. Yeah. I wonder, um, so at, at the bottom of that chandelier is a piece of solid gold uh, that is so heavy. Uh, they might let you hold it, but it's, it's hard. You, you might struggle to hang on to it. I don't worry. I'm pretty strong. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right, sir. Thank okay. you. Thank you.